Rick Peter. Yep. Good evening. I'll call the uh, Westmead Township February 2020 meeting to order. Roll call. Jordan? Here. Chardell? Here. Bovard? Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that all supervisors' public meetings are subject to public and or private audio and video recording. Is there any public comment on agenda items? Please note that public comment will also be received during each agenda item and at the end of the meeting. This time I'll entertain a motion to approve the January 6, 2020 reorganization and regular meeting minutes as presented. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Roll call. Jordan? Yes. Chardell? Yes. Bovard? Yes. Entertain a motion to accept the treasurer's reports for January 2020 and approve payment of bills in the amount of $91,053, subject to audit. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Roll call. Jordan? Yes. Chardell? Yes. Bovard? Yes. Okay, we'll have the municipal reports. Police Chief Chip Brown. Good evening. For the month of January, we received 89 complaints. 86 of those were cleared. Time spent in school zone uh, enforcement was seven hours. Traffic watch within the township and patrol time was 136 and a half. There's 115 hours spent in the office. Uh, two hours was spent on arrest and processing. 63 hours worth of investigation time, 18 hours was spent in court, uh, 52 hours of miscellaneous time. Uh, that's meeting with different uh, agencies, uh, investigations. There's four and a half hours spent on training. There was 14 traffic stops with five citations being issued, one for speeding, two for driving under suspension, one for unregistered vehicle, one for careless driving. There were nine warnings issued, five for faulty equipment, one for failure to yield, one for unregistered vehicle, one for high beams, and one for obstruction, obstructed windshield. There were 42 investigations <clears throat> with two reportable accidents, two non-reportable accidents, three winter parking ordinance violations. There were six animal complaints uh, we assisted other departments seven times. We were assisted by other agencies twice. We assisted fire and EMS four times. We answered one residential alarm. We assisted citizens three times. We recovered one, uh, I'll say a cluster of stolen property. Uh, there were three check welfare persons calls two court subpoena services, uh, two 911 hang-up calls, and three requests for fingerprints. Uh, we investigated one civil complaint, one sexual assault, three DUI or DUIDs, uh, two drug offense, one uh, possession with intent to deliver, six controlled substances, one possession of marijuana, six drug paraphernalia, three outstanding warrants, one fraud investigation, one identity theft investigation, one burglary, two thefts, one vandalism, uh, four weapons investigations, uh, five disturbance calls, three harassment calls, one attempt to locate a missing person, uh, one suspicious vehicle check, one suspicious persons check, and one behavioral. There were a total of five felony arrests for January with 23 misdemeanor arrests and one summary. The summary arrest was for harassment. The misdemeanor, there were three for unsworn falsification of information. There were two alcohol-related DUIs, <coughs> uh, four charges with uh, drug-related DUIs, one false ID to law enforcement. There were 10 charges with uh, drug-related charges, uh, one 
with making repair or selling uh, illegal weapons. There were three felony charges for false uh, information given for the PICS investigation. Uh, one uh, uh, charge for criminal use of a facility communication and one felony arrest for possession with intent to deliver. Total mileage of the police vehicles was 2,825 miles. Okay, any questions for Chief Brown? Not, I don't think. Sounds like you had a busy month. The guy, some of the charges are from stuff that happened back in December um, that the investigation wound up in January. So the, the charges were charged in January. But we've, we've been pretty busy so far and the guys are doing a great job. I can't think of enough for the, for the job that they do, the time that they put in and the, you know, especially the residents that are calling in with information that, you know, we've said it for a long time. If, if something looks out of place in your area, call us, let us know, give us a heads up. Uh, we'll be more than happy to come check it out, keep an eye on it because the prevention and crime prevention starts with the residents in their neighborhood. They know what looks out of place and by them letting us know, it just kind of gives us a heads up to keep things, uh, you know, under control and kind of be proactive. All right. Thank you, Chip. John with the road report. Uh, from uh, January 6th to today, uh, a little bit busier this month with uh, winter. We had 15 actual days where we were either plowing some snow or out treating, you know, slippery road conditions with Aniskid and just general winter maintenance. Um, we also completed the first round of uh, cold patch, uh, putting uh, uh, cold patch down in potholes. So first round of that is done. And we're trying some new material too, so hopefully it'll be one and done, but we'll, we'll see. Um, we also had some trees that gave us a pretty rough time this month. So you had uh, trees down and uh, trees ready to fall down on different streets such as Terrace and Springs Road. And uh, we've been trying to address those and get them before they create other problems. Um, we had quite a bit of repair to uh, road signs, posts, and lights. When it's as wet as it is out, it's pretty hard to keep some of these signs. The wind plays havoc on them. So we're constantly trying to keep those uh, in good condition. Uh, as far as equipment repairs, we have a, an Etnire uh, self-propelled chipper that we've been doing a little bit of rebuild work on. We used it last year and uh, uh, there are just a few wear items on it that we're trying to replace and update and make the thing a little more user-friendly and efficient. Um, we also had some miscellaneous repairs to uh, the plow trucks and also to some of the police department cars and uh, clean up on all those vehicles as well. Uh, uh, let me see here. After, uh, oh yeah, after some of the heavy rains that we had here, uh, we also were out trying to uh, open up some plug pipes and culverts and drains that give us constant problems with the overabundant amount of water. <clears throat> Uh, you know, there's still some leaves out there that plug things up, so we were working on that. So that's pretty much so our month, and uh, hopefully spring's just around the corner. Hey, Mike, any questions for John? No, I don't. How's the new bucket truck working out? Oh, boy, good, real good. Um, that was one that Mike researched and found over in Ohio, and we went over and looked at it, and other than it's, it's got some high miles on it, but it was been, had been well maintained and you know, the thing's really working out good for us. And it also is helping us daylight our roads a little better, you know, because we have some conditions where the trees are literally hovering over the road and we just, you can't maintain wet roads. It just is difficult to do with the freeze and thaw that we have here. But that bucket truck is truly a, a uh, a good piece of equipment that we use on a constant basis. We use it for sign repair, tree trimming, nonstop. 
thought I saw it out on the road here oh, this yeah. past month. Oh, yeah. In trailer replacement, have you had a chance to use that yet? Uh, we did use it. We hauled our paver and uh, roller on it, and uh, uh, we've got a few things that we need to critique a little bit. Nothing major, but just some easier ways to load and you know load it and unload it, and. Uh, uh, but we, we did good there too. We found a trailer that was, you know, very little use for a reasonable amount of money after the other one got damaged. Why we had to do something pretty quick. So, all right. Thank you very much. Jill with the monthly zoning report for the month of January, we did not issue any zoning, any permits, any building permits, but we do have a number of them that are in the works and a few um, two family dwelling units. So that's nice to see some new housing units coming along. So good. You mean the ones that are currently under construction, you mean? Or? No, these no, will be ones coming. that are coming. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. So next month's permits will be reflective of that. Plus we have some more throughout the year. So it's nice to see some single family or two family dwelling units instead of just simple additions yeah. or renovations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, the, for, the first order of business under regular business is to exonerate the tax collector uh, due to the removal of non-resident and deceased individuals from the per capita tax rolls and adjustments in the assessed value of real estate at this time, I'll entertain a motion to exonerate Janet Peters, 2019 tax collector in the amount of $128.33 for real estate taxes and $520 for per capita taxes. Motion, make a motion, Don. I'll second that. Any discussion? Just a standard yeah. yearly motion that we make and pass. Roll call. Jordan? Yes. Chardell? Yes. Bovard? Yes. Okay, next up, we're going to discuss Township Cleanup Day. Township Cleanup Day has been set for Friday, May 15th, 2020 from 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturday, May 16th, 2020 from 7 a.m. to noon at the Crawford County Fairgrounds. Uh, the Secretary is going to obtain quotes for collection of electronics such as televisions, computers, monitors, and other miscellaneous items as we have done in some years, if acceptable to the vendors. This was not available as an option last year and probably will not be again this year. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to authorize the secretary to obtain those quotes and ratify the chairman to sign the agreement with Crawford County Commissioners to use the fairgrounds. I'll make that a motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? That's just normal business for our cleanup, and the only thing I can say is, is we're still hoping to be able to continue to do two-day cleanup, and, uh, you know, it's not cheap, but we're still trying to do it and, you know, keep that service out there for our residents. No, I've been fortunate enough to work the last two cleanup days, and uh, it's been pretty busy. Uh, it's amazing. For a good majority of those hours. And it's a really good opportunity that we provide our residents to clean up and get rid of stuff that would be difficult for them to get rid of any other way. Roll call. Jordan? Yes. Chardall? Yes. Bovard? Yes. Okay. Item number three, entertain a motion to hire Clayton Doolittle as a part-time probationary police officer for the Westmead Township Thank Police Department at an hourly rate of 1375 effective February 12th, 2020. I'll make that a motion. I'll second it. Discussion? Um, we have to go through the probation process with him again? Yeah, he, because he resigned when he took his other employment, um, he's starting, he has to start out back he at Square One. He was here along with us for a while. He was for a couple years, and then he had gotten, he was part-time, and then he had gotten a full-time job, and then uh, had resigned from here after he got the full-time job. and. Now he's wanting to put his feet back in part time and. Well, he knows the ropes. Yeah, yeah we would have minimal training time to put into him. No. Sheriff's deputy? He was. He was. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was I say he did that. Yeah. Could he change his name to do a lot instead of do a little? 
<laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Any other discussion? No. <laughs> Roll call. Jordan? Yes. Shardle? Yes. Bovard? Yes. Item number four, entertain a motion to enter into a salt contract participation agreement with State CoStars program for 1,000 tons of road salt for the 2020-2021 season. I'll make that motion. Second. Discussion on the motion. Now, this is just a normal procedure. Something we do every year. Um, that 1,000 tons, that'll be more than enough? Oh, yeah. We actually cut it down. We actually, it was, what, 1,500, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And we cut it back so that it gives us a little bit of relief and, and, and we don't have to buy as much. Say the winners like this, you know what I mean? Hopefully we're keeping our fingers crossed trying to get through with what we have and hoping that we don't have to buy any more. So, yeah. Wait. Nothing. Roll call. Jordan? Yes. Chardle? Yes. Bovard? Yes. <clears throat> Item number five, entertain a motion to authorize joint road work bidding with various municipalities for 2020 paving road projects. I'll make that motion. Second. Discussion. Well, it's just we're trying to get some better pricing, so we're all joining forces here and, and uh, hoping that the numbers fall in our favor. That's for seal coating, right? Yes. Yep. And do we know how many other municipalities are going to join us? Yeah, well, this is for paving. So wait, wait a minute. This is, we're, oh, we're, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we skipped paving. ahead. So, but oh. this is for the, and there's um, potentially four municipalities so far okay. for the paving. Yeah. All right. It saves us money, Dawn, by with the advertising and everything. So right. it just makes sense. Yeah. And then it makes it these contractors, it makes it look a little more appealing if they get more work, then they can mm -hmm. give you a little better number on stuff, so. And they're moving into the, right. the right. mobilization fee. Right. Okay, roll call. Jordan? Yes. Chardle? Yes. Forward. Yes. Item number six. Entertain a motion to approve resolution number 2020-3 to authorize participation in the 2020 Crawford County Joint Seal Coat Bid Program and to appoint Roadmaster John Shardle as delegate and Secretary Jill Dunlap as alternate delegate on behalf of Westmead Township for various single seal coat road projects estimated at $40,000. That's this. It's in your packet there. Yeah. Which is another uh, joint uh, bidding process that we're going to try to go through to get some better numbers here. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. <laughs> Second. Second. Now, do you want to have more discussion? No, nah, I just had it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> right. Sorry, right. Mr. Bobart. Mr. Mike, Chairman. Mike, do you have any? No, I do not. Okay. Again, this just makes sense to uh, get as many municipalities together and try and save the township some money. And I think there's like 15 in this one. Yeah. Remember, there was a yeah. there's a larger number, yeah. so hopefully the quantities are. This is actually the first year that we've taken advantage of it, and uh, I, th I think it's going to pay off for us. I really do. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that we get a good number, and we've lost. We only really be there only be probably one bidder for this project. We've lost our other supplier right. to seal coat work. Uh, they've sold, and now we only have one, so okay. it'd be nice if somebody else would step up, you know. I mean, but there are no seal coating contractors in this area other than yeah. suit gut, so. Okay. Which is nothing wrong. I mean, they're a good they company. Good work. Yeah, they, they, I'm not, they're, they're, they're a good company. Yep. And they are in our township, too. Right, right. And so, their products are good. They're yeah. good products. Quite yeah. a complex down there in the industrial Oh, yes, part. yes. Hey, roll call. Jordan? Yes. Chardell? Yes. Over. Yes. Item number seven, entertain a motion to authorize the secretary to obtain quotes for anti-skid and aggregate materials under the state contract. Make that motion. Second. Any discussion on that? Uh, that's just, again, normal. I will normal say stuff. this year, um, because we piggyback with PennDOT, um, so anybody on the state contract, 
They're, they have a five-year agreement in place. That agreement is up December 31st of 2020. So where we normally get these bids that carry us from, say, April 1st through next April 1st, the construction season, we're going to only be able to do it through December 31st. So that will put us on kind of the annual, you know, a different time frame. Yeah. Um, but so we might want to just kind of we're going to have to work on that a little bit to see about quantities and, yeah. and materials well, on that and you, you hope that you know contractors that you've been satisfied with their materials in the past that there's going to continue to yeah. stay on that approved list you know because you have to you have to be approved through PennDOT right you can't just say hey I want to sell this and it doesn't work that way there's more to it okay so roll call Jordan? Yes. Charles? Yes. Hovard? Yes. Number eight, entertain a motion to authorize the secretary to obtain quotes for concrete sidewalks and parking areas that must be in compliance with all ADA regulations and any necessary requirements under the PA DCNR grant regulations from the playground area at Oak Grove Park. I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Oh. How are we going to go about that, Joe? Are you going to you're going to advertise that, or are you going to send out an invitation to somebody? Or? We're going to be working on that, you and I. Okay. <laughs> and I just, uh, we with, want to get somebody that yes that does good work because PADA. and it has to be in compliance with, with the, the DCNR, and yeah. so that's where um, we just have to figure yeah. out some. When it comes to pouring concrete and stuff like that, you need to be careful because you just. You don't want it to, you know, <clears throat> be misused, and then because it won't be longevity if it's not put down right. And you know, there's contractors out there that know how to really do it, and then there's contractors that just slop it into place and give you what you got, and it doesn't last. And I think we need to really p pay attention there. That's all. So, hey, roll call. Jordan? Yes. Chardell? Yes. Bovar? Yes. Okay, I guess that's it for the business. A few notes. Judith's Jig Memorial 5K Run and Walk will be held on March 14th, 2020, beginning at 9 a.m. They will be starting and ending at Diamond Park in the city of Meadville after traveling out Terrace Street and back. Uh, please remember to slow down when you're in that area. A final note, donation of $5,000 was received from VFW Post 2006 to be used toward the construction of the playground project at Oak Grove Park. I'd like to thank VFW Post yes. 2006 for that generous donation. Yes. They've been very good to the township over the years and sure also been have. very good to, to uh, the fire department as well. Yeah. Any public comment at this time? Mike, anything? Nothing tonight. Okay. <laughs> Supervisor's final comment, Mike. Nothing tonight, John. Uh, just the normal stuff. I hope people get ready to take good use of our cleanup day. Um, I've been looking around the township. Jill and I were just talking today, and there's some things that <clears throat> really need attention, and uh, some of it's the same offenders. I just hope that they, they finally take advantage of it it's just a good thing to do and you know once you get it cleaned up keep it that way that's all you know easier said than done for it some. is but boy oh boy mm -hmm. okay i have nothing so i will entertain a motion to adjourn so moved second Dis okay. any discussion on that <laughs> as, Wal as walter would say you sure you want to do that yeah <laughs> roll call Jordan? Yes. Charlotte? Yes. Over. Yes. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening.